Oh goodness. Hello you. what's going on so today we actually have some unfortunate news about Pearl she has gotten her first broken blood feather now what happened was I was home alone with Brendan and Kevin was out on an errand he'd been gone for about 10 minutes and pillow and Pearl were both sitting on my shoulder and they both flapped down to the ground and as soon as Pearl landed she started squawking a little bit kind of a kind of noise and I looked down and one of her wing feathers was kind of sticking out at a 90 degree angle and I thought, oh no, she's obviously broken a feather. And then all of a sudden I noticed blood starting to come out. And if you read up on blood feathers on different websites, the very first thing that every single one of them tells you to do is not panic. And what's the very first thing I did? I panicked because Kevin wasn't home, Pillow was flying around acting all crazy. And the only thing I was thinking about was, oh my gosh, a blood feather is a potentially life-threatening situation and my bird is going to bleed to death right in front of me and I'm not gonna be able to do anything about it and that's gonna be the end of Pearl. So my first thought was I need to get Pillow out of the way because like I said, he was kind of jumping around her and she was kind of freaked out. And so I was trying to chase Pillow back in the cage and I was, hindsight, I was probably yelling at him to get back in the cage and basically I was doing everything wrong. So I knew you're supposed to put some kind of coagulant immediately on the wound. It could be a household substance like flour or baking soda or cornstarch or styptic gel. So I ran out to the kitchen, I threw some flour in a bowl, I came back and Pearl was, you know, kind of flopping around on the floor and she was, again, still bleeding. And I realized I didn't have a way to actually get the flour onto her wing. She doesn't like having her wings touched even normally. And I guess, again, if I wasn't panicking, I would have thought to very calmly go get a towel, try to cover her, wrap her up, you know, do it the way that the professionals do it. In my state, I did not think about that at all. Now, I was very, very fortunate that after a minute or so, the bleeding seemed to stop on its own. There was a couple little drops on the floor, but as I was watching Pearl, there didn't seem to be any new blood coming out. She had one little red patch under her wing, but it didn't seem to be getting any worse. Now in this time, the feather itself that had been sticking out from her wing actually broke off. And when I picked it up and looked at it, I could see where it had actually broken. And I knew from reading on other websites that the blood feathers are new feathers that are growing in. And because they're new feathers, they need, they need the blood. The blood supplies nutrients to a growing feather. And once the feather becomes mature, it doesn't need those nutrients anymore. So the blood vessels pretty much just shrivel up and go away. So I'm thinking that could possibly be the situation with her feather, that it was a fairly mature feather that didn't have a ton of blood vessels in it. Maybe they were already in the process of shriveling up and going away, and so therefore there was not that much blood. Um, if that was the case, then we got extremely lucky. Uh, I called Kevin and he came home as soon as he could. And at that point, Pearl was fine. She was back to her normal self. She's always happy to see Kevin. He walked in the room and she just looked up at him and she jumped up on his arm and up on his shoulder and she was completely herself again. She didn't seem to be in any more visible pain. So like I said, we got very lucky with this particular blood feather. Now there's two schools of thought on blood feathers. One of which is you should always pull the blood feather out because even if it stops bleeding, there's a chance that if the bird bumps it or hurts themselves again, that it could resume bleeding and it could be worse than it was the first time. The other school of thought is that if the feather has stopped bleeding on its own, don't mess with it, don't touch it, leave it alone, because the process of pulling a blood feather from a bird is extremely painful. They actually likened it to pulling off a fingernail with a pair of pliers. And people feel that it's not necessary to put your bird through that traumatic process if it's not completely urgent. So that's what we've done with Pearl. Um, this was actually about two days ago that this blood feather happened, and we've kept a close eye on it, and she has been completely fine since she's been flying around, she's been playing with pillows, she's been playing with her toys. Um, there has been no more blood, so we're still keeping an eye on it, but we have decided to just leave it be unless somehow it starts bleeding again. So that was our own personal experience with the blood feather. Now this is not in any way to be substituted for advice from your own vet. If your bird gets a blood feather, you need to assess your own situation, your own bird, what's going on with it. 
If you feel the need to contact your vet, absolutely do so, even if it's just for peace of mind, see what advice they give you, and obviously you need to take it on a case-by-case -case basis with your own bird. So one thing to keep in mind that I didn't even take my own advice on this, um, is that broken blood feathers are quite common in birds, especially young birds who are clumsy and they still have a lot of feathers growing in and they just don't maneuver as well as older birds. So when you see a blood feather, just don't panic. It's, I mean, could potentially be a serious situation, but as was the case with Pearl, it was not. So the biggest thing is just don't panic and just calmly assess your situation and then decide what to do next. Another thing to keep in mind is that most broken blood feathers will heal on their own. The important thing is to just keep an eye on them, keep monitoring your bird, especially in the couple of hours after the feather breaks, just to make sure that the wound doesn't reopen, that the bleeding doesn't resume, and to just be on standby in case anything else happens. But most broken blood feathers will heal on their own. And it's a good tip if you have a bird to always have some sort of coagulant handy in case this happens. Flour, cornstarch, styptic gel, anything just sort of at arm's reach near your bird's cage so you can grab it if you need it. And again, like I said before, the most important thing that I did not do is to just not panic. Just calmly assess your situation and take it from there. And we have included in the description below some links to sites about broken blood feathers and you can read and decide what the best course of action is to take if this happens to your bird. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.